tried one of these out for quite a while and uh, <clears throat> I've long time been a fan of headless basses for several reasons one being shorter they're smaller they're a little lighter usually not always but uh, this one is lighter this is probably right around seven pounds a very light instrument which I like so um, we got that and uh, when you're on stage you got a little more room you don't have to worry about taking out your guitar player or singer with your headstock, although sometimes they deserve it. So uh, you'll just have to jab them with the end of it if they get on your nerves for any reason. But uh, Ibanez, Ibanez, I love Ibanez basses. I've been playing them for many years now. I don't know, probably 12, 15 years, I lost count. But uh, I have several. And I enjoy them. Uh, Well-made instruments. They're made in Indonesia. I got a lot to tell you about this particular one because it's uh, something that I don't recall Ibanez ever doing before, making a headless bass. They've made a lot of crazy basses. Some things that are really out there. I couldn't believe that they put them on the market, open to the public to buy these uh, unusual bases that they build, but they'll, they're, they're, uh, their team puts together some great ideas and, uh, you know, some are simple little things and other are more technical like this one. But let's talk about this one right now. Um, it's uh, 24 fret. It's got active electronics and a passive mode as well. So uh, the uh, pickups are Bartolini designed. Uh, BH2, I believe they're called. They're passive pickups, but with the active electronics. You could get some tones out of them. This, this bass is loaded with all kinds of tones. I did a uh, review on another instrument, and that one had the the biggest spectrum of bass coming off the bass pot. Um, you got your treble and your bass. This one is very similar to that because I haven't heard this much bass coming off of instruments before. And check this out. Come on, man, that's crazy. That's more than you'll ever need. Pictures are going to be falling off the walls. That's that's a center detent right there. It's still got nice bass. I mean, I set these these things flat when I first start playing them. When I'm checking them out, 
and it tells me, you know, gives me a pretty uh, good idea where I need to go. Typically, I'll just bump up the bass uh, just a little bit. And that gets me what I refer to as my signature tone. So it's got a little trebly bite and some big fat bass on the bottom. So it's a nice foundation. Yeah, this thing is a funk machine. It's, uh, it's just great, easy to play. It's, it's, it's fun to play funk on this because I'm not a slapper really, but it's easy to do. It seems like it's very easy to do on this instrument. Um, so it, and with that heavy bass on there, this would be a really good heavy metal uh, instrument, uh, you know, if you're if you're in that into that kind of thing. I mean, this is good for anything, jazz, whatever you got, rock, anything, man. Oh, it would be a great reggae machine too. And a lot of people don't get used to the neck uh, headless necks, but I've I've had a Steinberger since I was, you know, probably for. 40 years at this uh, videotaping here, I've, I've had a Steinberger, and so I, I got used to it a long time ago. It really didn't take me anything to get used to it. You know, you don't want to sit here looking at your neck and your fretboard all the time. You want to be playing. And not looking at your instrument. You get better that way. Anyway, <clears throat> this isn't a lesson, by the way. Let's talk more about this bass. So you got your volume. This knob here, that's your selector, and my, my, my sound, my signature sound, I always leave that dead in the center because I don't want to be adjusting back and forth to get all these different sounds. I get my sound and I play, and I'm not worried about getting a better sound or doing this, I already got a good sound. So th then this knob here, you got your treble on the top, bass on the bottom. And then this one, you throw your switch up, you're in passive mode. Here's your passive controls. Here's that big bass. Now, the bass isn't as heavy as on the passive as it is with the active. So that you should know. But... Uh, it's still can't funk out. You can still funk out. You can still funk out in passive. Back to the active. Beautiful. Okay, so you got uh, you got that. Now, the thing, another thing I like about headless basses is uh, a lot of them, most of them, the majority of them nowadays use these micrometer style um, uh, bridges uh, where the tuners are right here. So um, they're very, very precise. And I learned that from the Steinberger, having the Steinberger for so many years. They're very precise. Now with the Steinbergers, they have double ball strings, so you got a ball in each end. Those things just don't go out of tune, you know? Now this, I haven't changed the strings on this yet, but um, I'm not real familiar with how to change this. It looks like, uh, looks like it's going to loosen up on the back and you pull the string out. It should be fairly easy. You clip it off right at the end here. Um, but if it was a double ball, then it would have absolutely no slippage. But, um, I mean, I think you could actually use double balls on these. I haven't looked into that yet. So uh, forgive me for that. Um, okay, let's take a look at the back. <clears throat> the back, well, five bolt neck. Very nice. That's a solid joint right there. And it's well made. Ibanez, they're made in Indonesia, and they make some nice instruments there. There are other companies from Indonesia who make instruments, but uh, Ibanez is probably the biggest. The neck, 
Oh my god. I love the way they have no polyurethane on the back of these things. Actually, they might they might have like a, a light coat, one coat or something like that, just to protect it and seal it from the elements. But it's so smooth and soft. And you do, it's like your, your, your hand can just go up and down fast without any sticking on, on the polyurethane. Sometimes with the polyurethane, you're on stage, you got the hot lights, your, your hand gets a little sweaty, and it, it could stick a little bit with the polyurethane. That's why I don't like that. So back here, you got your uh, control compartment and your battery for your active electronics. Now, here you got a Nutrik, uh, what do you call it? Well, it's a cord retainer, I guess so uh, your cord won't get torn out easy uh, like if someone's or you step someone else or you step on your cord uh, it won't get pulled out uh, there's good things and bad things about that like if you got it plugged into your amp and you walk too far it's like a, your your cord is like a leash and with this it won't come out of here but it will pull your amp off the <laughs> off your speaker cabinets and they could damage it, so that's something to be aware of. But uh, it's still a good thing, uh, you know, as long as you don't do that. Um, the base, when you buy it new, it comes with a soft case, I believe, and uh, it comes with, I think these are shallower uh, strap locks. I haven't set them up yet, but the, 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 uh, these, are, uh, uh, these are just the regular studs right here, and you get a separate uh, clip that goes onto your uh, strap. Uh, so you got locking strap locks from the factory, which is unusual, but there's, uh, there's Ibanez for you. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna cut this back for a minute and talk about this instrument because I have a lot to tell you. I'm gonna tell you first, though, I'm gonna start with what I don't like about it. All right, very few things. The good things about this instrument far outweigh the bad things and the bad things aren't all that bad um, there's <laughs> all right so you got a strap lock here right and you got a cord here now if you got this kind of guitar stand like all my guitar stands are like this now so there's no headstock to hang it from this is a hanging guitar stand so uh, you got to have one with a little uh, uh, body rest on the bottom but what I would I wish they would have done is put two uh, straps tra strap holders on the end like one on each side of the bridge and had it so you could rest it on that so you could just pull the cord and rest it on that, lean it up against the wall or something like that. But when you don't have a stand, that's what I would have recommended to Ibanez, but they never called me before they made this space. Now, I wish they would call me before they make another one of these. They have a higher end model of this and uh, that's pretty uh, uh, amazing looking. It's got beautiful paint, higher, higher end, it's got Nordstrand. Uh, pickups and electronics in it, which is very good company. Um, I, I really love Bartolini uh, pickups. They're great sounding pickups. I have them in several bases and they never failed me. They're awesome. Uh, okay, so that's that's uh, that's uh, the strap the strap hook things. The fret markers. This is this is kind of a biggie for me. These are supposed to be what they call luminescent. See the fret markers? You can't see him, can you? Well, guess what? Neither can I. I'm right here and I can hardly see him. If I got a little stage light in my eyes, I'm not gonna see him at all. They're supposed to glow in the dark, but I don't see him glowing at all. I don't see him lighting up. And even the ones on, on the fretboard, can you see those? Well, I don't typically play like this, looking at my fretboard. I can see him better, but I'm not gonna sit here playing like this. I wanna see these. Now, I, I could just, I could have something put there, or I could make some little marks with, uh, you know, hell, I could put put marks on there with a sharpie and be able to see it. But I can't see these luminescent dots. Uh, sorry, Ibanez, bad idea there. But uh, maybe you did it right on the higher end instrument. I don't know. 
Okay, the, 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 the cord lock, as I mentioned, you know, it's got good points and bad points. But when you try and take this out, I'm not going to do it right now, it's very hard to take that cord out of there. I don't know, maybe i got to put some silicone spray in there or something. Uh, but uh, that's, that's all I have to say. That's it. That's it. Nothing else. I mean, how can you go wrong? Those few things... A base, for, I guess it's about $1,100 brand new. And um, <laughs> that's a deal. The higher end instrument is, uh, I think it's $1,500. And that's a gorgeous, gorgeous axe. But I'm going to run through you the specs on this base real quick. Just so you know what you got. Okay, so the neck type. It's a five-piece roasted maple neck. So this is five pieces on the back here, and it's roasted maple. They actually put this wood in an oven and roast it, and it makes it more stable, less susceptible to humidity changes. So that's a great thing. And that's like something you see on a really high-end base. I would call like $1,100 to $1,500, like a mid-level base. You don't see roasted necks on mid-level bases very much. And uh, not only that, but it's got a graphite reinforcement rods in here. So I'm assuming there's two rods reinforcing that neck. And the neck is solid as can be, so that's a good thing. Um, the uh, top back body is American basswood. You know, I never knew if it was basswood or basswood. I'm going to call it basswood because it's a base. If it was basswood, it would be a fish, right? It's not a fish. It's a base. So we're not going to call it basswood. We're going to call it basswood. I think that's what it is anyway. I really don't know. Uh, wood's really great. I know them a little bit. But, uh, okay, so the, the uh, Roasted Bird's Eye Maple fretboard, abalone offset dot inlay. So they're offset. They're up on the top of the neck here, up on the top of the fretboard, rather. Medium stainless steel frets. Stainless steel is very, very hard metal. That will probably last your lifetime. I'd be surprised if you ever had to change those frets. Uh, that's 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 awesome. 24 fret. Uh, we talked about the bridge. The string spacing is 19 millimeters. If you're into that stuff, that's a very common string spacing. Very common. Uh, as I said, Bartolini BH2 neck and bridge pickups, and they're passive, even though it has active electronics. Okay, so both top and bottom pots do work on that for the uh, passive uh, electronics, uh, passive uh, pickups rather. And then, uh, let's see, uh, D'Addario strings from the factory, and uh, you should know that D'Addario is an excellent string. I've never had a problem with them. Uh, I've used them extensively over the years, and uh, that's about it for this. Uh, yeah, uh, actually it's not. There's a little bit more. The ergonomic body design. You know, when I see pictures of this in magazines, it looks kind of like jacked up and crooked a little bit. But when you see it in person, I don't know, man. It looks normal. It's funny how pictures change things a little bit. But the ergonomic design has to do with this right here. Okay, so there's like a... A crease almost right here going this way and from here down it goes in from here up it goes in so it's gonna sit closer to your body and I can tell you from playing this very briefly I mean it's nicely balanced in my in my lap look at that it's sitting beautifully right where I'd want it a lot of bases you got to mess with them and, and this is great and if I'm standing up it's also very comfortable, so it's a very ergonomic design, the body design. <clears throat> I really like it, and the slanted body back, 
uh, helps and uh, you don't think about it until you you know you read this and um, the rounded edge body chambered chambered body uh, so there must be chambers inside uh, of the chambered body is for a lightweight well balanced and comfortable instrument that's excellent for long sets or a practice session so uh, apparently there's chambers inside here probably up here because it sounds more hollow up there but that's cool you know I don't have a problem with that it still has a great tone that's the main thing that it's got a great tone right okay so yeah um, the other thing talk about the uh, chamfers um, if you look at this it's got a nice cutout the edges are rounded so it's very comfortable when it's sitting up close to you but <clears throat> when you go up high if you play up high on the neck like I do I don't always go up this high but check this out I'm all the way up I'm playing a uh, I'm playing a uh, dominant triad right there and I'm all the way up on the 24th fret Look at this, I still have room right here. I can get a finger in there. There's still plenty of room. So you could play up here. And it also comes with a detachable finger ramp, which goes right here. Now, a lot of jazz guys like the finger ramps. And the reason for that is, uh, you know, they might be playing fast passages wherever, but a lot of them are going to rest their thumb on this front pickup and Now with the ramp, if, you're, if your fingers are right between those two pickups, that's where your ramp is. I think it's a magnetic ramp too, so it just sticks on there when you want it. When you don't want it, you pop it off. So um, your fingers, if they go too far in, it's going to slow you down. But if you got that ramp there, that, that ramp is going to help help you correct your technique if uh, you're you're having a problem with that. Uh, your fingers getting stuck under the. Uh, under the strings a little bit. You don't want to. You don't want to be going. You want to be kind of floating on top. But once again, this isn't a lesson. So. These come in black, uh, white, obviously, and I think there's a blue one too. In this lower end model, like I said, they're around $1,100. The other ones, uh, they come in a few different colors. I think a crazy blue and a dragon eye. I love the dragon eye, that's my favorite color. Uh, really nice instruments. Um, same thing, basically, it's going to have a better, better paint job on it and it's going to have upgraded electronics but all the same great features as this so that's it for now dude man checking out with you give me a thumbs up if you like the uh, review here and i hope you did um and uh i would appreciate it if you would subscribe to my channel that helps me and i can help you we got more videos coming up real soon i'm going to have more time on my hands uh, to do some cool videos and uh, a lot of informative stuff. So that's it right now. Y'all take it easy and uh, happy bass playing. Now I'm going to get back to doing a little practicing. <laughs>
Thank you.